Hey, how's it going? Welcome to episode 10 of Sound Editing for Visual Media. In the last two episodes, we broke down my winning entry to the SOE Sound Design Competition. Today, I want to show you a couple more of those techniques, as well as show you how to use external editors in Reaper. And then I'm going to show you actually one of my favorite standalone editors, a free plugin by the name of Hourglass. Hourglass allows for some really cool sound design techniques. I'm going to walk you through how to use the app, how to set it up in Reaper as an external editor, and how I use it in my sound design project for some really creepy ambiences. Obviously, we can always stretch audio in Reaper. However, there are severe limitations on how much we can stretch an audio file in Reaper. Of course, I will go into a lot more detail in the blog post, as well as post some links to articles and videos where you can learn more on this topic. But for now, let's jump into Reaper, set up our external editors, and get to work. Okay, so here we are in Reaper back in my project and let me quickly show you Hourglass as well. This is not actually a plugin, this is a standalone program and it's actually made by Zanakios who used to be a Reaper community member as well and one of the main developers of SWS. So this program may look pretty simple but it's quite a feat of engineering and I really like using it. You know, if you've ever seen on YouTube those videos where they take like a Metallica song and they stretch it so that it's like an hour long and it turns into this crazy like ambient soundscape, they usually use Hourglass. One thing you gotta know, Hourglass works up to and not including Catalina in Mac. So if you're on Catalina, unfortunately you won't be able to use Hourglass, at least that I know of. So if somebody knows how to do it, please let everybody know. This is definitely one of the things that keeps me from upgrading to Catalina. So one thing I can always do is bring up my finder and then from here I can choose any sound and I can drag it into Hourglass and then I can render it out of Hourglass. But let's set it up as an external editor in Reaper and that way we can use some cool actions to bring things back and forth between Hourglass and Reaper and it works a lot better if you ask me. So in order to set up external editor, editors, what you got to do is go to your preferences. I don't bother memorizing where things go. I just find them down here. So I just wrote external editor in this little box here and I hit find and we'll get to this window under plugins, external editor. And as you can see, I have a couple of things set up. You probably won't have anything set up. So just go to add and then you can just click on browse here. Don't worry about this. And you can choose any app that you want to use as your primary and secondary editor. So my primary editor is, you know, Isotope RX7, which I use for some music and dialogue applications. We will get to those in due time. And then my secondary editor is Hourglass. And this allows us to do a couple of cool things. So if I go to my actions list, you can see that I have these commands here, open items in primary external editor, open items in secondary external editor. Just to quickly show you, I can always select this item. I can run this action, which I also have in my toolbar right here. It will open Isotope RX7 and I'll import the file to it so I can very quickly start working in the RX editor. Then from here, I can always export it and bring it back to Reaper. RX obviously has plugin counterparts as well. So I don't always use this, but sometimes I do. However, there's a problem with Hourglass. Again, this is a really old software. So some of these things are to be expected where if I click on the item and go open items in secondary editor, it doesn't actually bring any audio file. So I've created a custom action for this, which makes it a little bit easier because even if I open the editor, I'd still have to go and navigate to that file. It's a pretty easy fix if you ask me. I made a custom action called Hourglass. All it does is it opens item in secondary external editor and that's my Hourglass. And then it opens selected item path in Explorer or Finder. So let me show you how that works in action. I run the command. And again, I also have it in my toolbar right here. So let's run it. And it opens Hourglass and it also opens and navigates to the file file that I was selecting. So then from there, I just drag it into here and Bob Zironko. And now I'm going to show you how Hourglass works. Okay, so back to Reaper, something I wanted to do for this project is to create some creepy ambiences. And most of the more like ambience appropriate files that was provided in this project were really kind of peppy, right? They were birds chirping and, and sounds of engines and stuff like that. And that's not really what I was going for. I was going for way more creepy vibes. Let's listen to my BGs in isolation first, solo my BG master, and let's listen to it. You get the idea. These are just kind of like droney, somewhat creepy, eerie ambience types of sounds. And obviously there was nothing like that in my palette of sounds. However, if you take any sound and you stretch the hell out of it, you will eventually get to kind of a droney sound, right? So, you know, if I take a sound like this, I can always hold alt, go to the edge of the item until it turns into a hand and I can drag this out. And um, making sure that the preserve pitch when changing rate is off. Doesn't sound too bad. This is a really high quality recording, so you can actually stretch it quite a lot. But this is still only 16 seconds, and I want to stretch this, you know, so that it's about 30 seconds, so that it can serve as a BG sound. 
So if I do that, essentially what I've done is I've stretched the file to such an extent that most of the frequency content of the file has fallen below our audible range. So, you know, if something was 100 hertz, if you make it to be 3% of what it was before, now that 100 hertz is only 3 hertz, and we can't hear that. So what we're hearing is the really high end of the file being stretched into quite a low droney sound, which is not a bad sound in and of itself. Let's see this in action through a spectrograph. And with a rate at one, it sounds like this, and it looks like this. There's a lot of content here. A lot of the sound is around the kind of 1K and then lots of overtones. If I take this file and I stretch it, let's stretch it to halfway, 499, close enough. Now let's listen to it. Now what we can see is that the fundamental obviously is slowed down to half what it was before. So the kind of main kind of scrapey sound is now in the 500-ish range with the overtones going up. It's recorded with a really good mic so we still do have a lot of frequency content that can be found up here. And because it was recorded with a good sample rate, those are easily audible if only as noise. But if we keep stretching this, we'll eventually hit a brick wall here. Let's now go to 0.1. So now it's 10 times slower than it used to be before. And let's Let's hear it. So great, now we can see that it's, first of all, 11 seconds long. It's getting close to being long enough to serve as a BG track. But as you can see, basically we have a cutoff here at 10K because no matter how much content we record above it, once we slow everything down, our microphone didn't capture anything in this range, despite what our sample rate may be. The sample rate of this file was 192K. So it's theoretically able to handle anything up to 96 kilohertz. But obviously this wasn't recorded with a mic that can capture frequencies in that range. So we're left with a lot of emptiness in this range, anything above 10K. And then our fundamental of the sound has been really shrunken and it's now down to being at around only 100 Hertz. And the range of the overtones has shrunk as well. So basically we used to have like a quite a full sound going from like 1K to 12K. Now it's only going from 100 Hertz-ish to about 2K, right? So we took the whole range and we squished it. And, and this is a non-negotiable part of stretching audio. So now I'm gonna stretch it to this is now about 36 seconds and let's analyze it and now we can see that basically there's no info above 3k so okay this got really rumbly but we do have this option to preserve the pitch when changing rates so let's turn this bad boy on and let's go and choose quite a decent time stretching algorithm as well the elastic 3.3 pro and here we can choose a preserve performance but whatever let's just keep the normal and let's hit apply and now let's listen to it one more time so this will supposedly keep the pitch at what it was while letting us stretch it to whatever length we want We kept the frequency how it was, but we have these like kind of clear glitchy bits in the files. But overall, it did do a good job of preserving our frequency content of the sound. And it's pretty glitchy. It's pretty jarring. It's pretty nice. You know, we're hearing quite a bit of artifacts. We're hearing these like kind of glitchy cutoffy parts. What Hourglass does is that it gives us a little more control over this process. So without further ado, let's select this item. I'm going to put its rate back to one, hit apply. And now let's import this file into Hourglass. So run the action. It gives us the file. It gives us this thing and now we're in hourglass now in hourglass what you can do is well first of all we said we want this to be 30 seconds long and actually because there's like a tail and a head there i'm even going to go a little longer i'm going to go 50 seconds and i'm going to hit enter and now it says texture duration set to 50. now let's play the file and see what happens So it's already really cool sounding with the default preset, but we can definitely smooth this over. But essentially what it's doing is imagine it taking a lot of slices of this audio. And as we play through, it's kind of going through them slower and it's taking really small fragments of the file. Right now the fragment lengths are 0.1 seconds. So it's chopping the file up into a 10th of a second slices and then looping those slices as it's playing through the song. And then it's just doing the math on how many times it needs to play each slice for our entire sound to be 50 seconds long. Okay, so far so good. 
But there's a lot more you can do with this other than just stretching it, which was up to this point, we could have done all of this in Reaper. What I can do, for example, I can randomize the source position. So instead of it going linearly through the file, it can have a little bit of wiggle to it. Now what I can do, for example, is I can change the fragment rate. What that means is right now, every second, it's playing 31.6 fragments. I can bring this down quite a bit as well and get kind of this kind of like glitchy, I don't know what you call it. Like, you know, we can, we can hear the pulsation, right? Can even get it so that it plays only one, you know, every two seconds. So every two seconds it's playing 0 0.1 seconds of sound. And now we can bring this up. Let's bring it up to one second. Let's go back. So right now every every second is giving us three fragments. So right now it's giving us 15 of these every second. So some of these sounds are now overlapping into each other and that makes it a little more smooth and it's not so much glitchy. So now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to also have this spectrograph over here so that you can see what it's doing to the sound, right? So right now, instead of giving us those glitches, it's giving us 15 fragments of the sound. And the more we bring this up, it just kind of fills up the sound. It makes it a lot more smooth. We can also, because there's, an, there's a little bit of tail end here, bring this back a little bit. I wanna bring this forward a little bit as well. So let's randomize the rate as well have the rate change a little bit as you can see we have a lot more of a smooth sound so we're keeping the pitch completely as is we can also play with the fragment length So you can see the longer we make each fragment B, there's, you know, more fragments playing and each one is longer and the sound becomes even more kind of smooth, right? You can also change the volume of each fragment. Definitely never go too much above because it'll sound insane. It'll sound really loud. I don't want to do it to you right now. Get the app and try it yourself. It actually turns into a wall of distortion that could have its own uses. So right now, every second we're playing 40 fragments and each one is a second long. So let's see how that's done. And now this genuinely does feel like kind of a perpetual scraping. Next up is the transposition center. Right now we're not doing any transposition. We can keep it that way, we can definitely Bring this up or down if we want. This sounds quite nice, huh? But for now, let's keep this at zero. Another thing we can do is change the transposition spread. Every fragment will be transposed as a random amount as well. So let's play it. Now some of them are going up, some of them are going down. Let's put this at a tritone. How creepy is that? I love it. Let's remember what the original was. This was the original. Now it's this like creepy monstrosity. Since this is a mono sound, we can actually make this stereo as well. So again, let's keep the panning center at zero, but we can spread the panning out a little bit. Spread it to 100%. We can also obviously keep this at mono, but since we want BGs, we want it to be pretty stereo.
Another thing to remember is that the transposition spread goes above and below. So if I want to go up and down one semitone, then I'll just set it at one. If I set it to 24, it's going up and down two octaves and at random. We also have these two envelope controls, and these are, again, the envelopes of each separate fragment, not the envelope of the thing as a whole. As you can see, as I play with this, it changes up there. So, for example, if we do this, it's a lot more subdued because the attack of the sound is pretty mellow. Um, we can also add more points to this. And because this is made by an ex Reaper programmer, actually a lot of it will be really familiar to Reaper people. So I can just shift double click to create new envelope points, for example. Right. So we can make each fragment be really glitchy by just giving it kind of crazy envelope as well. So this is what it's doing now. It's taking from the entire length of the song, it's taking kind of little bits of snapshots and they're going together. And we can do the same thing with a pitch envelope as well. So again, I'm gonna go to envelopes. I'm gonna go show all. Let's just turn off this envelope or bring it back to A. Now let's play with the pitch envelope. So with the pitch envelope, for example, I can have the pitch of each fragment start really low and get high. Let's play it now. So if I bring it down. Sounds like an old sci-fi soundtrack or something, right? And we can play with the pitch furthermore. It just sings for you. It's super lovely. I can play with this forever. I don't even know how long we've been recording. And if we want, we can render this and it will just render it pretty quickly to the directory that I have chosen. There's a lot more you can do with this. It'll take me hours just to go through this. Um, you can automate any of these parameters. You can give them their own envelopes. There's a lot of cool things you can do. You can also bring in entire songs in this, right? So bring one of your own tracks and set it to be, you know, one hour long or something. So once I'm done, once I rendered it, I can come back to my project. I can put my cursor here. I can go to my media explorer to my hourglass and go creepy atmos and double click it and I'll put it in the project. Set a time selection, trim it, maybe put a little fade into it. And we got ourselves a creepy sound as I had before. Obviously, I spent a lot more time uh, on these and made sure that they are kind of the right length. I did a lot of automation to them as well so that they're to my liking. But I think for the scope of this tutorial, what I showed you is, is pretty good. I'll show you one last application of this. And I did this in another project of mine where I um, redesigned the sound from a Rick and Morty sketch. And this was this uh, Rick and Morty sketch where it's two brothers running in a van from giant cat monster. So this this is the scene in question with the cat monsters. Let's hear it. <laughs> and then later on, when a Mexican armada shows up with weapons made from two tomatoes. Then again, we got the cats here. Let's watch that too. And I, and I did this in Logic Pro because it was years ago before I used Reaper. I was just trying Logic Pro out when I was using Pro Tools and eh, nah, not for me for post-production. So for this part, I wanted the sound of multiple cats, right? So I got this sound and it's like a bunch of angry cat yowls. <coughs> and let's bring this into Hourglass and let's set our fragment length to one second. So as you can see, suddenly we got a lot more cats in here. And there's some cats kind of like in the background going and some of them are going Wah! And this is just to serve as a bed under some more sounds that I will put in there, right? So this time, we don't want to generate too many fragments. We want the fragment length to be pretty high. We can play with transposition a little bit. Let's spread the transposition, maybe three semitone.
And as you can see, sometimes the sound we get is like a cat meow that is cut off. But if I generate 10 seconds of this audio, I'll be able to get a few seconds out of it that are pretty well usable. So let's render that as well. Crazy cat action. Let's bring it into the project. And this was the sound I used in the project. Then I interspersed them with some closer yowling sounds. And this is what I got. So pretty cool. So already this video is pretty long, so let's just stop here. But as you can see, there's endless uses for Hourglass. And again, this app alone is kind of keeping me from upgrading to Catalina because I don't want to lose Hourglass. All right, that's it for today. As you can probably tell, Hourglass is a really complex bit of audio engineering. Big props to Zanakios for making it and for making it available for free. And you know, even though there's not going to be support for going through Catalina, you know, it's free. What are you going to do? Maybe we can all get a campaign going and donate to it. That's why I'm trying to make Hourglass really popular so maybe Zanakis will bring it back but yeah it offers tons of possibilities about a third of which I covered in the video today I just played around with it for about two hours I didn't even notice the time because it's really fun to play with and it's really complex and it's really cool and really the best way to learn it is just to download it yourself and just play around with it and it's endless hours of fun it's really useful for music applications it's really useful for sound design you can basically stretch sounds indefinitely you can take like singular kind of sound effects and create like a cluster of the same sound with it very very lovely very underrated piece of software in the next episode we're gonna look at how i mix the project from a home setting so that should be a lot of fun you know our philosophy here is to remain pretty ghetto at least until covid is out obviously it's really nice to have like a fader port or something like that but also it's good to just be able to you know churn out a really good product with just your mouse and your keyboard and when i was doing this project i had just moved to montreal and i didn't really have any of my gear with me so all i had was a mouse and a keyboard and a computer and well a bunch of plugins and yeah i, I did something that I'm at least pretty proud of. If you want to check out the Rick and Morty video, that's on my YouTube, though it's been demonetized. Hopefully this doesn't get demonetized. Or I should say they've been flagged. Not, my, my channel's not monetized yet. Thanks for being with me for these first 10 episodes. Hope to see you for another 10. All the videos from this series is in this playlist, so make sure to watch them, because I think viewership has kind of steadily declined over the course of the 10 episodes. And they are sequential, so the more you kind of go back and learn more, the more we will kind of establish a common language moving forward. And in the future, I want to do a few more kind of like one-off type of videos break down one project or show you one sound design technique or one editing technique i also want to bring in some collaborators and some colleagues because i think each sound designer's kind of individual and unique workflow and perspective on sound is really useful and tons can be learned from it i already have a few of those in the works but you know it'll take a while before they come out because people are busy including me you know i'm really interested in knowing why the viewership has gone down you know I, i'm pretty new to content creation so let me know what i'm doing right what i'm doing wrong how do you feel about my pace what do you think about topics covered what do you think about the lengths of the videos and obviously if there are any questions you have or if there are any topics you want me to cover i'm always super open to those so please drop all of those in the comments if you enjoy these videos please subscribe to the channel we're so close to hitting a thousand subscribers really excited for that and also if you really really like me you can donate to iddqd sound the link of that will be in the description as well as the blog post which make sure to check that out when it's out as well this video went on a little long so that maybe tomorrow any little amount helped and really any donation i make i will put towards you know making more videos and getting a better camera and just overall improving my entire setup i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you soon Bye bye